any useful statement about the future should at first seem ridiculous. I have been taking this past week this incredible training from the from the Institute for the Future on futures thinking. We're learning how to think about the future, how to think about the nature of the future. I've worked with the Institute for the Future on a number of projects related to the changing climate. Uh, one of which was the uh, a project we did with the World Bank, their climate investment funds. Uh, and I'll, I'll put a link down below to that, but it was great to step into this training with Institute of the Future to really go deep on how all these different tools work. Uh, so in the class, they cover, uh, they cover like more than 20 of these tools that, uh, that they use as part, of their, uh, as part of their practice. So in class, what we've been doing is going through these activities to, to try it out as, as a group. So over Zoom, we get matched into breakout rooms, we go in for lectures, we have homework, we have homework with buddies afterwards. The benefit of these tools is they give a structured way to, to think about future scenarios. This is something that I struggle with when thinking about climate change. It's really easy to get, to get locked into a particular situation or scenario. Um, and it's hard to step back and ask, well, what if this does happen? What if we hit uh, 350 parts per million in the year 2050? What if we hit, what if instead we go up in carbon and we hit 450? What if we hit 550? Um, oftentimes I found in my, my conversations in the, in the climate community, we get stuck on arguing about which one of those is going to happen. Um, and as they say at Institute of the Future, it is impossible to predict the future. Uh, but what we can do is to structure our thinking about the future. Too often we get stuck in which one is going to happen without really just stepping into it and saying, look, if this happens, what kind of world would it be? If that happens, what kind of world would it be? What would make us happy in that world? Uh, what would make us anxious about living in that, in that world? Uh, what would make us angry and inspired in that world? Those emotions, no matter what the future holds, those, those are a tool we can use to, to think about that future. Having tools for foresight for people to step into these different scenarios, to me, gives a way to, to chart a course, to think about, well, what are the things that happen uh, whether we're at 450 or 550 or 650? What are the things that we need to do regardless of, of which situation happens? Um, what are the, where should we invest our, our time? Where should we invest our money? I think it helps us prepare our thinking. So I want to share one of the exercises with you. It's called Headline the Future. Uh, and I love this. Basically, you uh, the, the, the point is to imagine what the front page of a newspaper or a magazine or a YouTube headline will say uh, in this future that you're imagining. So. Uh, what I want to invite you to do is to, to think about climate and carbon. Think about a headline. Um, I'm going to imagine the New York Times. You can come up with some other uh, publication if you want, like Wired or I guess on YouTube. Um, but imagine that publication and imagine the future that you would want to see in, in 2030 or 2050, whatever your, whatever your timeline is. You write down the, um, you write down the, the, uh, the publication, you write down the headline, kind of sub-headline, and just flesh it out a little bit. Um, I'd love to hear those uh, from you. Some examples are, a friend of mine said, uh, what will we do now that we've solved climate change? The idea was that was a New York Times 2050 headline. What will we do now that we've solved climate change? It's pretty cool, right? You think about being in 2050, you think about climate change being solved, whatever that means, uh, and this very human response of like, so now what? Send me your headline, what publication it is, and what year it'll be from. Uh, and I'll send those out next week. I'll share those with everybody else. Also, we just launched a weekly newsletter for negative. Uh, you can check it out at gonegative.co.